Hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to Squirrel Programming. Today we're going to do Rock the Paper Scissors and this time it's going to go back to modular design game. Here you see is the, the PDF that is available to download from Game Banana and you can access the map and the script as well. It just gives a good explanation on how it works and what we need for Hammer. So that's all I'm going to say for this part and now let's go straight into the code. So here is the code for the minigame. If you don't know already to do this, you need to go here and then do a logic script. Then make sure you name it, reference it, so manage plus. And then it should be located where you see school, scripts, vscripts, scripts. And you should place it nearby here, this folder. So you hit open. Then once it's up here, hit OK. Also, don't forget to reference the logic case here, which is called CPU, under the first entity and entity group. This is for direct access to the script. So instead of iterating over everything, you have direct access. That's the reason behind all these entity groups. It's for quick reference and quick access to the script. This is really important. Because if you don't name it, then you don't have any much access. Don't worry about this part here. It's not needed at all. So now if you go to outputs, this is where it comes really important. So now make sure that all this is referencing the script over here. So make sure that's referencing that. Make sure also that we do run script code. And then this is where we have our global defined things. And this is very really handy. I'll show you why. So we pop back into our code. Here is our main thing for those functions, parameters. I noticed as we use the new slot operator here. This is crucial. I cannot explain it in this video alone, but this is how you declare a global variable in Squirrel. Notice as you have a prefix for each global variable, this lets Squirrel know that this is a global defined. Without these two columns here, it will act as an inner scope instead of an outer scope. You can access these out with the script, which is what we need for Hammer. Notice as each one of these increments by one, starting at zero. The reason why is because we want to use this here, we want to use options. Options have lower caps. The options we have, this is because this will save us doing lower in the string, which takes extra calculations, but that's because due to optimizations, we're going to keep it to low. So we use these as to represent integers for the parameters. So zero, one and two, basically what we do is zero, one and two. And notice as each one corresponds to the correct element in the array. We have a CPU RAND. This is a global inner scope that holds the reference to our logic script. Notice that that's zero. This is the first element assigned to the logic script. We also have our global inner scope variable called bot underscore move. Remember, we cannot have spaces in a name and that's assigned to null initially. So this is initially empty. Here we have is a associative array, also called a table. A table has two things. It has a key and it has a value. A key will always be a string the value can be anything. So here we see we have rock, paper, scissors. This reassembles what things we can do. So if it's rock, what beats rock? Scissors. So whatever is here can be whatever thing is here. We also have a table called score, which holds the player's score and the CPU score. This is more handy as you don't need to use two different variables. So it's easier to manage and quick to reference. So the first function is to make the bot move. With strongly typed languages, we usually have a data type in front of a parameter. So if this was like in C or Java, we would do simply 
int move. But remember that this is a dynamically typed language. So the compiler will know what move is. But the issue is with dynamic languages, we don't know what this is initially. So this is why we have type of. Now this type of returns back a string of what it is. So we want to test an integer, but notice that this here tests. If the type of move is not an integer, then we display a message to the console here that we expected an integer, but we got something that's not an integer instead to the console. What we need to do is validate if the range is perfectly fine. Remember that we have an index of zero to two. This means that our range has to be within here, it can't be less, or it can't be more. That's why we have, if move is more than or equal to zero, and move is less than or equal to two. So this is us, we're gonna check what the range is, then we assign bot move to whatever the move may be. So this will access the options. So if this, if move was assigned zero, then this would be rock. If it was two, it'd be scissors. So we assign this based on index and store it right back into bot move. And remember that we're gonna use return. So we're gonna jump right out of this. We don't return anything back. So the compiler will be okay with that. But notice as here, if it's not within range, we will display it back that is in range. But now we do bot equals move equals null. This makes it empty again. And this won't be called if this is called. So if this is called here, this will be called. When we call return, we tell this to not do anything as it stops right here. So this jumps right back out of the function. Here is our second method, which is called make move with a parameter called move. Notice as we use the fire by handle method, this will allow us to activate and control within hammer. We use the object entity of CPU underscore rand. This is our logic case. We then call the pick random function. There is no extra parameters needed. We have zero delay and we don't need a caller and an activator because we don't need to know those extra information. Same as above, we check that if the type of move is not an integer, then we tell it to display the console that we wanted an integer and we return it, so we stop here. We test the range, but notice as we have this now, we now check that if bot, if it's empty, null, then we tell it to jump right back out. So this bit here will not be called if this returns true. So we basically jump when we hit return. Now we use a local, this is important as you can use a global inner scope here, but with a local, that means it's only this function. So we want to declare a local. This local scope variable is called player underscore move. And notice as we have options move again. So depending on what move will be, will be the move selected. Now here is the fun part. We now validate if when moves, but we validate it to the bot, we compare it to the player move. So if the bot went for rock, this will return the object that can beat it, which would be scissors. So if this here, if I can draw, so if this here is scissors, that means that the CPU will win. So we use score, we access the CPU, and we increment it by itself, so by one. If the bot move is equal to the player move, that means that we have drawn. Using else if, 
If these two statements are not called, then that must mean that we have won. So we do score, player, we increment it by one. Then if it's none of these, we display that the parameter number was not in range. We set the bot right back to empty, so null. Then we display the score. So that's mostly the logic within the code. So you can download this today and experiment with it. Add some things, design some things. If you want to, add more functionality. This is just a practical video for today. Remember that the PDF is available with the map. And thank you for watching. I know that this hasn't been the best video so far. Hopefully this makes the logic more easier to understand. And I'll try my best to draw better next time. See you in the next video.